So hello everybody, welcome to this Teach Meet. It's the last live event of our MOOC, as you already know. I think we know each other well so far as we are learning together for four weeks now. So my name is Efi Saltidu and I'm the course coordinator of the Addressing the Global Climate Crisis in Your Classroom MOOC. Before we start, I would like to quickly explain what a Teach Meet is. So a Teach Meet is a great opportunity to learn from peers, to reflect on practices and tools and, and from your work environment and to share your expertise. Speakers will discuss any subject related to climate change, education and sustainability, whether it is an interesting tool, resource or a project, a helpful activity or a relevant practice, method, insight or experience. Speakers are going to have five minutes to present and I'm going to be the timer and the moderator of this discussion. If you have any questions, please feel free to share them in the chat box or if the question concerns a specific speaker, you can use the Padlet uh, and we will try to address them by the end of the Teach Meet. I'm going to put the link to the chat as well so you can, so you can open it uh, in case you need it during the presentation. So that being said, as you understand, I'm not going to be alone in this event. I'm very glad to have Tota uh, today a great lineup of speakers who were willing to participate and share their practices and methods. I would like to inform you that 40 more people would like to participate as speakers, but as you understand, if we would allow all of you to present, we would need the full evening for that, so we had to make a selection. However, I warmly invite you to share your inspiring ideas in that chat box if you hear something relevant from the speakers and add relevant links or resources to share your perspective. Do you hear me well? I see some comments in the chat. Okay, good. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to the first speaker. Together with us will be Maria, Marta, Ismail, Julia, Diana, Crisula, and Yorgos, Emma, and Daniela. So the first speaker is Maria Vasilopoulou. Maria, if you could uh, turn on your microphone and your camera and we can start. So Maria is coming from Greece. She is an English teacher in secondary education and she has been an active e twinner since 2012. Her motto is, uh, where there is a will, there is a way, and her favorite word is resilience. She tries daily to integrate these mottos in her daily curriculum. So, Maria, the stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really uh, happy I'm here. Can you hear me? Just to make sure. Okay. Yes, we hear you. Perfectly. Great, great. So, uh, the whole MOOC has been a great inspiration to me, so I try to use things I learned and prepare a project that uh, I would like to implement next year. My project will be an e-twinning one, and it's entitled Think Green, Act Green. It will be for uh, students of um, level B1, uh, uh, secondary students, 14, 15 years old. Main points to consider, it will be a mini project that will act as a starting point for a longer one whose aim will be to develop a sustainable development action plan. That is, we would like to create a school culture of sustainability in the near future. Um, collaborative tasks will be um, um, uh, our, uh, will be in, uh, in all uh, the project and we would like to make students, active learners, participants, we would like to accomplish the learning goal set and, of course, engage other school subjects apart from English, that is, uh, natural sciences and art. Um, I see some comments that people can't hear me. I don't know. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. Yes, we hear you. I don't know why some people cannot hear you. Okay. I can hear okay, so you perfectly. So maybe if you have okay. a problem with the sound, uh, the rest of the people, you should try to, to solve it from your own uh, okay. device. I, I continue because I have five minutes and I know that, so I have to respect it. 
My, my, the learning objectives will be to enrich students' environmental knowledge, to raise awareness of the importance of reducing their ecological footprint and the need to change their habits in order to be more environmentally friendly, because they are not, to develop emotional and social skills um, such as self-esteem and character development, and to develop 21st century skills, the ones we know, critical thinking, problem solving, decision making, oral communication, to promote sustainable development, active citizenship, feelings of engagement and civic interest, feelings of empowerment, ability to take action, and to help them live a life that supports sustainable practices and hopefully influence others to do the same, hold their language skills, of course, and help them uh, to teach them uh, to learn how to learn. That's very, very important. So uh, at first, I will start with two videos uh, to offer inspiration. Students will watch these two videos that I share on my screen, and then they will discuss and they will think about the topic of climate crisis. Brainstorming will be um, which words come to your mind when you think of climate change, an answer garden tool. And then students will uh, take a quiz. What do you know about climate change? They will do it and they will discuss the results of the quiz. Great surprise there. Causes and effects of climate change. Uh, students will watch a video on National Geographic. They will take notes. And at the same time, they will uh, see and, um, uh, climate change in pictures uh, from the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Uh, the resources have been borrowed from uh, our MOOC. Um, climate uh, literacy, working in groups, students will uh, answer a couple of questions, like, for example, why does climate literacy matter? How has climate changed through centuries? What human activities have a profound influence on climate change? So I'll work, um, I'll try to work a lot on climate change so students to realize what actually it is. They will, uh, all of them working in national and international groups, be shared uh, with um, a, a COGU, a mind map, and then to make sure that they have learned things, uh, what a better way than a game, Kahoot, to check, consolidate, and assess. I'm sorry. OK. And now has come uh, time for a very ecological footprint. At first, I will introduce the Earth Overshoot Day and students. Um, will um, take uh, um, will uh, calculate their ecological footprint. They compare and uh, they will compare and comment on the results in relation to food, shelter, mobility, goods and services. And their footprints will be shared on uh, twin space, on twin board, and on their uh, classroom eco wall. And they will also um, uh, calculate their family's uh, ecological footprint, uh, footprints. And I am sure the results will be really many. Um, and uh, um, the results will be surprising as well, because I don't believe that they will have a, a light uh, carbon um, uh, footprint. They will discuss. And the best thing, of course, the best stage will be to find solutions. So we go to the R's uh, plan, rethink, reduce, reuse, recycle, and upcycle, and more. More is to plant a small garden in their school with herbs or adopt, for example, a flower plant, um, a small flower uh, pot in their classrooms. So rethink what action they need to take to change the environmental habits. Uh, recycle, they will talk about recycling, and they will um, put uh, uh, possibly handmade recycled bins made from uh, car cardboard in their school. They will prepare posters with photos and useful tips. And uh, um, uh, they will vote the po for the post uh, po uh, posters they like best and then decorate their school. They will talk about reducing um, reduce wasting electricity, water, paper, and money on careless shopping. Of course, this will be on different, uh, possibly with groups and in different lessons. Uh, here is just the idea. Um, and reuse, uh, we will use art. Of course, the art teacher will help how teachers, uh, how students can use um, materials uh, to upcycle use materials to decorate their classroom. OK, I'm trying to be fast. Uh, the Earth Hour Calendar, that was a very interesting thing. I found it in one of the resources shared on uh, our MOOC. Students will be introduced to the Earth Hour and to the Earth Hour Calendar, and then there will be a challenge. They will make their own calendar themselves, getting inspired um, from uh, the one shared and adding their own posts and, uh, themselves. And they will share that with the school community. And the ones who will keep that 
will um, possibly have a chocolate or a small reward, a surprise reward. Um, the lesson will finish with a digital eco escape room. Uh, this will be the uh, one challenge and the last one for them and to see what have the students learned. Uh, do they feel more confident about their environmental awareness? Do they feel they can contribute as ambassadors in our attempt to create a school culture of sustainability, our next project? If yes, then um, mission accomplished. That's all. I think I am with me, within my time, I think, right? You were excellent, Maria. Thank you very much. Excellent timing, very useful. It's everything that you said. I think it's quite uh, relevant. I'm glad also to see that the MOOC also inspired you somehow to introduce some practices in your lessons. So that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I've just put it the link. Put the link uh, in the chat again in case you have any questions for Maria. You can uh, post them on the Padlet, and we will address them at the end. So Maria, please stay with us. Of course. Uh, We'll, uh, and we'll may, we may come back uh, at the end of the presentation. Great. Excellent. So now I'm going to move on to the next speaker. My next speaker is Marta. Marta Pay is coming from Spain. Uh, she is a neat winning and FCL ambassador. She is a European Projects Advisor for the Department of Education, and she works as English teacher and Erasmus Plus coordinator. Marta, could you please turn on your microphone and your camera to see you and listen to you? Marta, we are waiting for you to connect. Yes, I'm, because I was logged out and now I'm logging in. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think I've got everything now. Okay, Hi, can you see me and hear me and everything? Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, the stage is yours. Right. So, I'm going to present an activity I did three times, in fact. Once I, I did it with uh, my twinning project and twice with my students at the high school. In fact, I'm working part-time in my high school and I work part-time for the Department of Education of Catalonia as a uh, European Programs Advisor. Okay, so what was this session online? This was session is about, I mean, it's, it's an online session, but it, you could also do it inside with your students. Uh, it can more or less last for one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, even longer if you want. Uh, it tries to be interactive, so the aim is to get students to talk and I think it's suitable for uh, students of 14, 18 year old. Um, that's what I was saying about it. It was done in two different situations, but all within the confinement period. Uh, it was in April, basically. And the objective is a part of, uh, because it was in the English class, um, was to, to enhance their uh, speaking, English speaking skills. It was to compare the situation of the COVID. But it, uh, 19 crises in each partner country when we did it with it, our twinning partners. Also, our students could express how they felt at that very moment and also to talk about uh, how this crisis was affecting the, the climate change crisis. Here, I think that you will share the presentation. You have the, the link to the full pre, uh, presentation if you can want to use it with your students. So um, we talked about first um, within, when we did it with the twinning partners about comparing what whether government measures in each country, the ones whether were stricter than others. Then we moved into a, a section in which uh, students could uh, express their feelings, and we use an interactive uh, web tool called Pentimeter. I'll show you then some screenshots. And so they could express how they felt and in which zone they were. I will show you later on the, 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 the picture. And then the, the last session was more about discussing, discussing about uh, the relationship between COVID-19 and climate change. We took some experts from this article that was taken from a science magazine. And we talked about air quality and climate change, also about the policies in in the world, in, in all the countries in the world, what is going to happen 
about energy sources, and also about individual actions. So this is about the first part, uh, when they talked about themselves. So uh, basically, the first activity was how they were feeling at that moment. And we got this nice word cloud with their feelings, how they felt, bored, optimistic, etc. And then the second part was to say in which zone they were. There were three zones, the fear zone, the, um, the learning zone, and the growth zone. Especially with my uh, students at high school, that we did it on the 30th, 30th of April, we had been uh, in confinement for one month and a half. I told them, just compare yourselves when you were at the beginning of confinement and now. Have you grown somehow? And we got these responses, you can see here. And then, uh, these are different questions that we asked them about all, uh, all these um, topics, about the air quality. Do you think now, do you see the, the clear skies, blue skies? Do you think the air uh, quality has improved? Because everyone is confined, everyone is at home, many industries are locked down, there's less traffic, etc. About the work policies, they think that because now um, all the governments are uh, focused on fighting this uh, virus, uh, but when everything goes more or less back to normal, will they start, uh, uh, invest again in uh, all these environmental policies or they will, will have to recover economies so there will be no money or no investment in um, climate change policies or uh, also about the energy, because you know the the uh, the the, the, um, the price of oil has gone down quite a lot. So now, is it profitable to uh, invest in energy and renewable energy sources? And also about individual actions. Being locked down meant that you could not go on demonstrations that you used to, and maybe. Um, because, the, well, the people are just fighting and there will be more uh, activities that they will help the environment because there will be more people teleworking, for example, and not just moving around with cars. And basically, what's this? I think that you, you can make use of it um, in many situations, um, even if it's uh, uh, with people from other countries or with your own students. And I hope that it has been inspiring for you. That's it. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Marta. It was very useful. You were on time. I see also very nice comments. People like your ideas and your projects, so thank you very much. Please stay with us as well so we can uh, address any questions we might have. Excellent. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks. So let's move on to the next speaker, and the next speaker is Ismail. Ismail, could you please connect your microphone and your camera? So Ismail is coming also from Spain. Uh, he's a bilingual biology and geology teacher at the IES Cervantes, Cervantes, something like that, teacher trainer in ICT and scientific ambassador. Excuse me, Ismail, if I pronounce something incorrectly. So you have now the states and to, to, to explain your background, your ideas, and to share with us uh, everything you want to share. We don't hear you, Ismail. Let's wait a bit. Do you hear us, Ismail? Maybe we have some delay, some technical problems here. I'm not sure. Please write to me on the chat, Ismail. Yes, you will have access to the presentations. The recordings will be av available on the platform by the end of the week, and the presentation uh, will also be uploaded in the platform, so no worries about that. 
so to not uh, lose some valuable time, I'm going to move to the next picture, Ismail, and we can try to uh, connect a bit uh, later, if that's okay with you. So I'm going to the next picture. I'm going through the slides very quickly, and I'm going to Julia. Julia, could you please connect? Turn on your microphone and your camera, please. And I'm going to present Julia very quickly. So Julia is a Spanish Sea Cleaning Ambassador and Erasmus Plus Coordinator. Uh, and Julia, the stage is yours now. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we hear you perfectly. Excellent. So following the actions of the students under energy and interest in fighting climate change. This year, our school, IES Guadalquivir, with our Erasmus Plus partners from Italy and Greece, as well as other par partners from Czech Republic, Estonia and Poland, we have started an e-twinning project called Climate Action Agents of Change. I am an e-twinning ambassador and Erasmus Plus coordinator in Spain. So in our local community, um, one of which, uh, one in which our pupils face so many obstacles that they must uh, overcome in their everyday lives. These inspirational young people are increasingly more aware and committed to fighting climate change. So this project intended to take advantage of our pupils' enthusiasm towards climate change by raising awareness about the importance of caring for the environment and becoming more proactive in incorporating such measures into the school ethos. So this has been a timely initiative as climate change is e-twinning theme for 2020. So the key aspect of this project is collaboration. It is only by working together, building trust and building relationships uh, can we start to make these changes. So to do this, um, this project has a number of interrelated objectives, uh, developing problem solving and critical thinking skills by proposing solutions to environmental issues, their citizenship competence as they are acting as responsible European citizens, participating in civic life actions and global sustainability. And we have achieved these aims by organizing video conferences to encourage contact with the students Live meetings have been a key aspect to facilitate the work on mixed teams. We have also run a very successful local competition in which many students took part. The students were able to show their creativity and uh, demonstrate what the project meant to them through their artistic uh, talents. And finally, a major objective, an essential objective that underpins the entire project is the integration of the project as part of the curriculum. So this change can only happen with the commitment of the whole school community and the teaching of climate change across a range of subjects. So some of the activities that we have been able to carry out through the project have been organizing recycling activities, such as uh, creating a recycling corner, uh, Christmas decorations and cards, visiting local waste management centers to understand the importance of waste uh, reduction, and creating environmental groups of students who truly identify with climate change issues. Also making connections with other organizations within the local community is also crucial. Therefore, the project will expand local networks, linking schools, NGOs, and other stakeholders. And of course, the key product of climate action agents of change has been our public uh, twin speed. So uh, the impact of the project has had in my school is clear. Our school has focused on pragmatic action with uh, the allocation of more resources to the development of the school allotment. Recycling is of course a main focus and we have done this with the vocational training students specialize in mending and fixing clothing so pupils can reuse out of a style or ripped or broken clothes. And staff continue to attend online uh, training on climate change and their continued work 
towards the main aim of incorporating of climate change education into the school curriculum. And the best example, of course, is uh, this course. So although uh, the school closure uh, has interrupted uh, our project, we will continue meeting as many milestones as possible next year. And uh, hopefully um, through another Erasmus Plus project. Uh, I talked before about being pragmatic, but also being virtual. It's another skill for this time. So we're also trying to be inventive and innovative uh, in other ways. And we have planned to integrate uh, app inventor and virtual reality in the curriculum. So to finish, uh, e-training is the key to our continuous success with our pupils as we aim to integrate climate change education into the curriculum. And we aim to develop the pupils everyday skills uh, in being more environmentally friendly. And we continue the shift towards the virtual with focusing on developing their digital skills. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Julia. Thank you for the nice presentation. It's excellent. You shared some nice ideas. Could you please remind us the age of your students? Yes, the age of our students uh, is from 11 to 14 mainly. Excellent. Thank you. Please stay with us and have a look on the Padlet in case you see any questions for you. I will indeed. Thank, uh, you. Let me, thank you. Let me go back to Ismail if he's available now. Ismail, can you confirm if you, if you would like to present now? Can you try to turn on your microphone and your camera? No, probably Ismail has some uh, technical issues. So I'm going to move on to the next presenter. And the next presenter comes from Croatia. So uh, Diana, please turn on your microphone and your camera. Diana is an English teacher at the Vocational School in Croatia. She's going to present herself and, of course, is going to present her inspiring ideas. OK. Can you hear yes, me? we hear you. OK. Good afternoon, everybody. We don't see you, though. My name? Hello? We don't see you yet. You don't see yeah. me? Turn on your microphone, your uh, camera. Okay. Here I am. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Diana Jelavic, and I'm an English teacher at Vocational School in Omish, Croatia. Uh, today, I'm going to share with you one of my e-twinning project activities that can be easily carried out in online classroom. Sorry, Diana, we still don't see it you. Deals... If you want to keep your camera off, that's fine. But just for you to know that we don't see you. We can hear you perfectly, but we don't see you. You don't see me. And now it's loading. Yeah, now it should be fine. Excellent. Can now you see, see me? You. OK. Uh, what about my presentation? Can move on. Is my presentation here? Yes, it is. OK. Yes. Now, today I'm going to share with you one of my uh, e-twinning uh, project activities that can be easily carried out in online classroom. It deals uh, creatively uh, with the 17 uh, sustainable development goals, enhancing at the same time all of four Cs. Uh, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity. Uh, this activity represents an active response to the climate crisis with the aim of getting students to think about goals and start living according to them. At the same time, it is an example of a campaign with the help of social uh, networks in this case, a Facebook group, uh, where you are also invited to participate and contribute by sharing your ideas. We can move on. Learning, learning goals 
of these activities are uh, to harness the power of reading by creating a list of recommended books inspired by goals to contribute to their achievement, then to promote the diversity of European languages, to get familiar with the literature and art of partners' countries, to choose the top 17 books of European literature with a topic of 17 goals, and to get familiar with Europeana, inspiring a digital cultural heritage platform. So uh, here you can see uh, nine countries, European countries, that are involved in this project. And the students from nine European countries are engaged on sustainable development goals through national literature, literatures and art. They are divided There is no slide here or Effie? Yes, is there something missing? Yes, no, okay, no more slides. You're moving the slides. We see you moving the slides. Yes, I'm moving them. Yes, now we see the recommendations for reading. Yeah, you, probably you don't see because you're moving on to the next slide. I can handle the slides. Let me know where you want to, to stop. Okay, shall I continue? Yes, please. So, the students are divided into transnational groups. It should be here. Each dealing with two sustainable development goals. Uh, as it can be seen in, on the slide, in the last group there is an innovation, goal 19 which shows a quick adaptation to the real-life circumstances and COVID-19. The activity will be shown on the example of the first group that deals with topics of no poverty and zero hunger. These are the first two goals. After having done some research in their national literature, students share their results and here is what we get at the end. Now you are supposed to see the re recommendation, their recommendation for reading. We see that, yes. Is that okay now? Yes, we see it. You see, I can't see anything. No worry, no worry. Maybe it was, uh, there is a bit of technical issue from your side, but we see everything. Please go continue. Okay, what do you see now? The recommendations for reading from nine European literatures on SDG. Okay, so you see the recommendations. Yes. Okay, these are recommendations. And uh, can you see the wall from the gallery? Yes. Showing Turkish paintings on the topic of poverty and hunger? Yes, we do. Okay. And after that, uh, you can see collaborative tools offered to students to accomplish this task? Yes. We yes. see Canva, Twinspace, Book Creator. Yes, these are the collaborative tools that are offered to students. And you can see a book published in Book Creator, where students have collected their choices of literary works, shortly describing the plot in their mother tongue and English. And you can see the book cover, of uh, which, which was made by students from Bordeaux, graphic students from Bordeaux. Uh, Students also work collaboratively on the quiz in Google Forms to check their understanding of proposed literature. Uh, Power of Youth is our Facebook group where you are all kindly invited to join and learn with us about sustainability 
through great literary examples and art exhibits. And on the last slide, I don't know if you can see book covers. Each group, each transnational group, agreed upon the content of the book cover. And the graphic students from the school, from Bordeaux, from France, they made these amazing book covers. And that was the end of my presentation. Thank you very much Thank for you. listening and sorry for these technical issues we had during this. No worries, no worries. Sometimes it can happen. We can we could see though your presentation, so don't worry. Thank you for the for the interesting presentation. Please stay with us in case we have any questions for you by the end of the course. You're welcome. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Diane. Bye. Sorry, I see Effie is gone, um, so I'm going, okay, Effie is back. Um, I was just going Both? to take over and move on to the next presentation. Okay. Yeah, sorry, it seems I lost, I lost my connection. Okay, do you listen to me now perfectly? Yeah, okay. So let's move to the next uh, set of presenters. We have Chrysula Thanasiu and Georgi Fantis uh, from Greece. They are both uh, biologists. And uh, they have some very inspiring ideas to share with us. Um, they're going to focus on games as a means to teach climate change. So we are really very curious about, about what they have to present. Chrysula and George, you can connect yourselves now. Please turn on your microphones and your cameras so we are able to see you and listen to you. Hi, you're Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, Effie seems to be gone again. Um, Chrysula, we cannot see you, though. Uh, you need to activate your camera from the top of your screen and then also click on the video you see. So there will be a button saying share screen. Yeah, there you go. Now we can hear you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. So, hello everybody. We're really glad to have done this course, to have been in this course, and we are glad to be with you now. Um, as Effie said, we are, we are both biology teachers, and the games we are going to present are part of our project that addresses climate change to student teams that come to our environmental education center. So this means that we have tried these games with hundreds of students between 10 and 18 years old and teachers as well. Um, let's see. That's our presentation. Sorry for not starting it. Uh, so uh, let, here are some reasons why to use games to teach climate change. Uh, games encourage active learning and active engagement in dialogues, talking about the, these things. Allow you to simplify complex systems such as climate change. They allow players to take decisions and receive feedback on the result of those decisions. They provide opportunities for reflection, discovery, exploration, and challenge. And of course, they are fun. I think this is a serious incentive if you consider that emotions matter in learning. They are easy to apply and we believe that they can really be an unforgettable learning experience. So let us present two of these games in brief, hoping that you try them with your students. 
The first uh, um, game we're going to present is the climate change, uh, the, the greenhouse effect. Uh, the greenhouse effect is a game aimed to help pupils understand how does the greenhouse effect work, connect the effect with causes that create it, and with actions that can help to reduce it. As you see in the first picture, the child in the middle represents the Earth. The circle around the Earth represents the atmosphere, where the children that represent carbon dioxide molecules are placed, and there are also sun rays that are represented by the rest children placed in the bigger circle. The number of sun rays remains stable throughout the game, while the number of CO2 increases as the game proceeds. During the game, the sun rays enter the atmosphere unhindered, warm up the Earth, but when they try to exit the atmosphere, some of them are trapped by carbon dioxide and some escape and return to space. The first round of, round of the game explains the natural greenhouse effect with only some sun rays trapped by the few carbon dioxide found in the atmosphere. As humans, use more fossil fuels to fulfill their needs and wishes, more CO2 enter, enters the atmosphere and trap more heat in it. Each time such an increase of heat happens, the students place a coat on top of the child that represents the Earth. The play is accompanied by a simple story that describes milestones of energy use, as well as increase of population and consumerism in the human kind history. So, this is a simplification that works well and helps pupils to understand the effect, both the natural and the man-made greenhouse effect. A teacher can play it once, even before teaching the subject, and can repeat it again later, for example, when the pupils are aware and can propose actions to reduce the effect, we strongly suggest that. In this case, students can lift the code from the earth each time they propose a way we can reduce the effect. So the earth, in the end, gets rid of all the excess heat. George. So now I'm... Hello, everybody. I'm going to present the next game. Uh, the ga second game is called Sinking Islands, and it's a simulation of sea level rise at an island. Uh, in this game, you divide pupils in small groups of four or five persons, and a piece of paper or cloth represents the island that becomes smaller and smaller due to sea level rise at the times passes by. To show this in every round, you fold the paper so that it becomes smaller. And the challenge is all the island's inhabitants to find a way to remain standing on the available land. The teams that manage to do that after you play the game for some rounds win. So as you can imagine, it's great fun for children uh, to find a way to keep on their uh, small piece of uh, paper or cloth. When the game ends, you always ask them how the game was for them, easy or difficult, funny or uh, whatever. How did they feel while playing? How did they feel when they were not able to stand on their island anymore? And what would that mean for them in real life? What strategies did they use to manage to stay on their island? It is a great opportunity to say or ask them to find out if this happens for real, somewhere on Earth. And if no matter how far we live from this space, it will contribute in some ways to this result. And in this way, uh, it is an opportunity to address issues such as environmental justice, climate refugees, or to draw attention to values like compassion to other people or organisms, and so on. This uh, fact gives us a chance to point out the importance 
of the, having this kind of reflection after each game. That is the part that gives the game its added value for education. And it's not only a game to have a pleasant time playing it. So that is how games gives us the opportunity to create simulations of real life, to take decisions and face the result uh, under safe conditions, to have fun, to learn, to feel. You can have access to detailed description of these and some more games in the links we posted uh, in the chat and you can see in this uh, um, slide. Thank you very much. Hope that this has been useful for you. Goodbye. Thank you both. It was definitely useful because we have seen a more active approach to climate change and we see also how it can be connected also with different subjects, physical education, for instance. And who doesn't like a more playful approach to learning anyway? So thank you very much, both. Please also check out the Padlet for more questions or in case people want to receive the links uh, now. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So after Hrisula, we are going to keep ourselves in this playful atmosphere and we are going to Emma. Emma is a former teacher of Latin history, art and geography in English since 1998. She's specialized in CLE uh, and she teaches in uh, Interna Cambridge International High School um, in, uh, in Italy. She's a trainee and author of digital content and freelance researcher and she's going to present a gamified approach to climate change with Minecraft. Emma, we can't wait to hear you. The stage is yours. Thank you, Hefty. Um, my, uh, my family name is with a double E-D, but anyway, it's okay, it's the same, Emma Abate. Uh, hi to everybody, yes, this is my approach, it's a creative approach, I'm happy to be after uh, George and Crisola because uh, uh, game-based game learning is the same approach that I use for uh, this presentation for the project I made with my students. Uh, my students are 14, 15 years old, and I uh, work in a high school in Italy, as, as, you, uh, as you just told. Um, uh, I hope and I, I, I think that most of you already know what is uh, game-based learning. It's a, a very creative approach uh, to learning in, uh, in a very collaborative way because the students uh, can uh, uh, cooperate together uh, and uh, learn the topics uh, using uh, the games, so digital games or also uh, physical games as the ones uh, my colleagues uh, uh, described in uh, the presentation, the previous presentation. Uh, in my case, uh, we will work on uh, digital competence and skill and coding skills uh, because we use the Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft uh, uh, doesn't need uh, a, lot, a big of introduction, introduction because it's very famous. I have two children and uh, I can imagine that uh, most of uh, the teachers here in this uh, teach meeting that have children as well uh, know what I'm talking about. It's a very popular, super famous uh, video game that was created by a Swedish um, Computer uh, computer expert, and now it belongs to uh, it belongs to the to Microsoft. Uh, it's not an open source, so you have to pay for it. But during the uh, COVID emergency, COVID nineteen emergency, it was for free, and so uh, no 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 need to pay the license for the students. Anyway, I am not around the license is two dollars for one year, so uh, maybe you can have in the Microsoft packet for free. Anyway, uh, I use the educational edition because you have two uh, versions of Minecraft. There is a commercial version uh, to play. The beautiful of this game that you is a sandbox game. It means that uh, uh, you don't have a, um, an objective. You just have to create and destroy uh, all the world, all the ritual words you, you, you want. It's, a such a, it's something uh, very similar to Lego. Uh, there are blocks and you, there are endless words you can create. Uh, if you want to uh, have a look, you can go uh, to the, uh, this, uh, um, uh, this website where you can find the uh, educational edition. 
Uh, the inspiration for this project was uh, uh, given by uh, the European Commission portal, uh, named the Nature Basic Solution for Smart City. Uh, after we give you uh, the link in the chat, uh, is a, a portal of the European Commission where you can find all the suggestions for a, a, um, an eco uh, and smart uh, development of city uh, towards a sustainable life. Uh, so we concentrated with my students on uh, goal 11 of the from the uh, 2030 agenda, and uh, the goal is uh, sustainable cities and communities. Uh, in uh, during the uh, lockdown and isolation due to the emergency of the coronavirus, uh, um, we could uh, uh, go on projecting uh, on Minecraft because uh, uh, the aim of our project on Minecraft, this virtual world, this video game, was to create a smart city. We collected a lot of examples uh, of the good practices uh, uh, of uh, landscape, urban landscapes that use uh, uh, eco-sustainable uh, way uh, to develop, uh, for example, um, car, uh, green, uh, green transport ways and, uh, and a lot. Uh, for example, Helsinki in uh, Finland, uh, for Europe, but many cities also in USA. Uh, so we collected lots of materials and we moved uh, on Amachi. Amachi is an open free uh, virtual private network, VPN, uh, in which you can set up uh, in uh, two minutes uh, a very secure uh, remote access uh, to network with uh, other people. So all the students were able uh, to work uh, in distance learning to build together the smart city of the future. Uh, we also used other, um, other tools that maybe you, are, uh, you already know, for example, Edmodo for the virtual classroom, Tracy there, uh, to collect the ideas, the Padlet. Uh, anyway, I think that most of you are familiar uh, with those uh, uh, tools to, to connect on distance learning because we are uh, uh, teaching on remote. In Italy, we are still in lockdown and will be uh, till uh, the end of the school in June. Um, this all, these are the products, the final products we are still working on, but for the, ten, the next 10 days we will be finished. Um, the students were divided in groups, in, uh, so it's very excellent for team working and for life skills, uh, for soft skill, for example, the ability to work in groups, because uh, um, every group has uh, a different uh, item to, to build in uh, the Wizard World of Minecraft. Uh, some uh, built uh, the school, the school of the future, with uh, lots of virtual board, uh, virtual uh, blackboard uh, everywhere, uh, and uh, very circle uh, desks. Oh, the fantasy of students is really handless. If you uh, f let the students free to imagine and to create, there is no limit to, the, to their fantasy, to their imagination, really. And uh, Minecraft is a wonderful tool uh, to, to feed uh, the imagination. Uh, it's very nice, uh, this um, state with this monument uh, on the global warming. Uh, one student had a very great idea. He built uh, a, an igloo, an Antarctica igloo, that uh, is uh, melting down because of the global warming. And inside this igloo, in this monument uh, in Minecraft, there is uh, a poor uh, Antarctic uh, uh, beer. And uh, also the fountain, also the uh, eolic uh, turbines for uh, wind energy, uh, for example, a, a house with the solar energy panels. Uh, the students studied a lot uh, to build uh, all the all the parts of this city because uh, you have to solve uh, a lot of problems, so how to manage, for, how to cope with uh, um, a sustainable uh, uh, energy supplies for the world cities. And it was a very great study and great effort from everybody uh, to complete the city. And uh, it's really, really uh, wonderful to visit it. Uh, you have to, uh, you can enter, it's not uh, uh, possible to enter the city if you don't have Minecraft. But anyway, uh, I will share very soon uh, a video that uh, collects uh, a sort of uh, a vision of the city uh, that is uh, almost uh, is uh, going to be finished. Thank you so much. I hope I was uh, short and I was uh, quick enough. Yes, you were perfectly on time, Emma. Thank you very much for sharing your ideas.
And with Minecraft, you also develop your computational thinking, right? Coding, that's another... Oh, of course, for digital, for code, because with Minecraft, with Minecraft you can also uh, um, practice your code, your coding uh, skills, uh, because, for example, you can also uh, make uh, a sort of uh, melting of the ice caps in Antarctica. You can create everything you want and also moving uh, uh, everything you want. You can create biomass, you can uh, explore... Of it, really it's uh, something endless if you start uh, to enter in this world uh, you cannot go away anymore because there is so much to explore i can assure you indeed the possibilities are endless thank you very much emma thank you okay let's move on to the next speaker so then uh before ismail we have dani yerla from croatia uh, you can connect now if you want um, the last presenter, not the last one before the last presenter, comes from Croatia and is a fix, physics and technology teacher uh, in a middle school. With her presentation, we'll focus on STEM and invites us to find a STEM solution for pollution. So we can hear you now. Uh, hi. So hello, everybody. It's going to be really hard after all these beautiful presentations, but I'm going to do my best to show you what we have been doing. So uh, today I'm going to show you uh, the activities from a, a little um, larger project that had four types of activities, but the interesting one connected to climate change um, have been done in a pollution find the stem solution project. It was a two-year cross-curricular project uh, that um, was an e-training and Erasmus project, so you can hear see the website of the project and um, e-tweening website also. I will sh uh, tell you why later because you can uh, download some stuff from it. And it was a really interesting project that the European Commission found it very interesting. So they gave us like two honor success story and um, uh, sh uh, sorry, something with the sound. Oh, okay. Can you hear me okay? or? Yes, we hear you. You can move okay, on. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to move on. So in this project, the idea uh, was, besides renewable energies and cultural activities, to measure pollution. So we uh, first we wanted to measure uh, light, sound, and air pollution. And the students, uh, they were uh, 11 to 15 year old. They uh, investigated what is the light pollution, what is sound pollution, what is air pollution. Then they came up with ideas, how can we measure them in school and our environment? So uh, we, uh, the students, we only gave them like mentoring. It was a project-based learning. So uh, they uh, used Lego uh, EVA 3D Mindstorms robot to program it with sensors to measure light, to measure sound, so decibels and the uh, lux. And for air pollution, we um, uh, created a little device with a sensor and uh, measured walk gases. Walk gases are volatile organic gases that can be found in everyday products. So students measured, for example, a cleaning pro agents, they measured uh, um, uh, uh, like hairspray, uh, nail polish, and other everyday uh, agents that they are using. And uh, they categorized these uh, 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 agents to see which of them have, have a larger volatile gases inside them. So after they measured all of it, they have uh, been analyzing the measurements using scientific methods. So they have analyzed their results, uh, calculated the errors, and presented all of their findings. So uh, aside from uh, measuring, they became little scientists. So they did everything from investigation to data collecting and to uh, uh, analyzing the measurements and in the end presenting them. Uh, so the results of these activities, in the end, you can find them on my website that I have uh, shared with you, uh, are um, eight uh, uh, 
uh, and it's five, uh, sorry, five future classroom scenarios in eight languages that you can download and use them. And uh, inside these uh, intellectual outputs, you have worksheets, video tutorials, how to ac assemble these uh, um, uh, devices. You have programs for the EV3 and tutorials how to uh, collect them. So you can. Uh, uh, do these activities in your own uh, schools and repeat them and measure them. So in the end, after we have done everything, the students have uh, found that, of course, some of the uh, decibel noises are very high inside school. For example, they have measured uh, in the classroom, they have measured during the big breaks inside our school and found them very, very high. So in a way, they uh, you will see later, they had awareness campaigns that uh, students should be a little bit quieter because it's very harmful for their ears. Uh, some of the schools, because we have five partners, some of the schools have found their uh, bells to be really, really loud. So they have written um, like, uh, a letter to the principal asking them to uh, please change the bell to something more joy uh, joyful for the years. And also, this project was so interesting that we have uh, made a little national e-twinning projects where in Croatia, as you can see on this map, like uh, 100 schools have joined and measured the uh, sound, only sound pollution inside their schools, but this time we didn't use an EV3 robot because it's expensive and not all schools have them. So we used Arduino, as you can see here, and we have created uh, a little sound uh, measuring device from Arduino that can also be, uh, the tutorials can be downloaded on eTwinning if you want to use them for your school. So it was really, really um, eye-opening project that in the end uh, uh, the students were so, so uh, happy with the outcomes, with everything we have done, and uh, that they uh, have uh, used it to change uh, their uh, local community. So apart from changing the bell, they have also tried cleaning the classrooms because we have measured uh, uh, cleaning agents for rogue gases. They have uh, asked the cleaning ladies to clean with the echo uh, cleaning agents, so ecological agents, and found that the wall gases were really, really uh, lower. So in a way, they have shown that by using uh, ecological agents, it's a very, uh, it's more safer for the kids to be inside the classroom. Okay, sorry, I have to quick uh, quicken because my time is running out. So uh, apart from uh, this project. We made some awareness campaigns inside our school and connected everything, these pollutants, to climate changes. So the students have spoke out to other students, the school, the parents, local community, and told them about our uh, findings. And also, as you can see here, a little comics and posters. Younger students that are not involved in this project have made comics, have made posters to show uh, their school and local community that uh, 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 the importance of renewable energy, the importance of uh, using uh, um, uh, echo cleaning agents and being a little bit uh, uh, quieter because it's not good for the eyes, uh, for the ears. And they have also measured uh, like uh, 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 sound pollutants inside our city, for example, near the airport or near very big traffic jams to show that uh, uh, it's very loud there, and it's not, it's uh, over the limit of um, hearing um, um, pain, oh, sorry, <laughs> hearing pain. So all this has led us to the new project that we are going to be doing from the September. So if any of you want to join, you are free to uh, join us on eTwinning. So it's going to be called Climate Action Now. It's going to be eTwinning and Erasmus project, we hope, because we applied for funding. So, but Nevertheless, we're going to do it. So this project will uh, be about uh, finding pollutants that are causing climate change inside uh, uh, our uh, area. So we have, for example, Portuguese Azores Island. So it's uh, uh, like a, 
ocean islands. So Tenerife from Spain, that it's very uh, warm uh, climate. So we have Poland, that's like continental, Croatia, that's Mediterranean, France, the Alps, they are going to do like how CO2 is um, uh, causing the ice, ice caps to melt. And we have Finland, a uh, country with very cold weather that has, um, uh, that's going to do a pollutant about um, uh, uh, social sustainability and how uh, our consuming uh, a lot of uh, um, different plastics and stuff is causing climate change. And for example, we are going to be doing microplastic. So we are going to be uh, measuring again, like I'm a physics teacher, so it's my thing. So we are going to measure microplastic in everyday beauty products. For example, some of these people, uh, some of uh, the students are using like uh, 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 cosmetic creams that contain little parts of uh, microplastic that are uh, keep that uh, that in the end get kept on their faces so we are going to be measuring it to see how much plastic is around us that we are not even aware of so this is the idea for my project so i'm gonna i have a lot more to say but my time is up so if anybody's interesting please let me know so i'm gonna thank you so much for your attention these are my contacts here and uh, hope you enjoyed this little brief presentation of my projects. Thank you very much. We did. Thank you very much, Daniela. Uh, could you please also share your website on the chat because some people are very interested in the project. So if you have a link to share, please. Yes, I, I can there. share them. OK, no problem. OK, we are running a bit late. Apologies for that. I'm going to go back to Ismail. Ismail, is your last opportunity to connect and uh, uh, present your slides. So please turn on your microphone and your camera now. And I'm going to move back to your slides. OK, this is one, one of the posters that my students are just producing in my high school. During the, the last uh, three years, we have been participating in one project that is called Sustainable Schools. And we just uh, de do a lot of activities regarding different topics, so water, recycling, and energy. Uh, regarding recycling, we, we did one campaign to collect and recycle mobile phones. I'm sure that you know the Jane Goodall organization. They have this campaign that in Spain is mobilized for the jungle. We, every year, we just collect around 100 uh, mobile phones and we send them to this organization and they try to recycle them. Uh, I'm sure that you know what happened with Coltan inside our mobile phones. Can you please go to the next slide? Thanks. These are some of the posters that these kids uh, just do in our high school. They use digital tools to, to prepare the posters. We always use open source applications. They did this in the technology subject, in the technology class, with tools like GIMP or Inkscape. And this is where we just uh, publish the poster in different buildings of the school to motivate the people to collect to, to share their old mobile phones. We all explain them what happened with the, what they have inside the mobile phone and so on. Next, please. This is our high school. And in this slide, I have a link to, to our, our project, but maybe later you can see. This is a video that we, we did during this project. The video was made by our students with another open source application. It's called KD and Live, and there's another one that is open shot. And we always publish our digital productions in one server that we have in Madrid that is called Educa Madrid. Next, please. Um, mm, the last activity that we are just doing now, and the most ambitious one, is we want to become self-sufficient regarding the use of energy. Nowadays, we only we use 
um, electricity for lighting the classes and the buildings, that this, this electricity comes from non-renewable sources of energy. And to heat our buildings, we use oil, gas oil. And we want to change and we want to move to be completely self-sufficient with solar panels and photovoltaic energy. And the students, our students already did one eco audit of what we just spent in electricity and in oil. And we are planning to, to move to heating our school with electricity and lighting our classes with mm, solar panels. And we already prepared the project. This drawing was made for one student, a 13 years old student. It's, this is one of the building that we want to cover with solar panels. Next, please. Next. And they also did using digital tools. In this case, in this case, using CAD CAD applications, they just model a 3D building, and we publish the model. Well, they did it with Tinkercad. I'm sure that you know it, and we publish it in our media library that is called Educa Madrid. Uh, in this slide, you can link to the to the model and see how it works. After that, some of the kids just print with a 3D printer the model, and we have one in the school. Next, please. And this is more or less what we want to do. The, now we are just in, in a moment that we need to collect money to to do the, the installations. And we are just uh, preparing a, a crowdfunding project to get the money because the administrations do not allow to do it. They, they don't give us the financial the money that, that we need. And I think that if we, in all the schools in Europe, we just use solar panel, maybe we can reduce the impact that we have over our planet. Okay, thank you very much for your Listen for me and sorry for the inconvenience. At the end, I was just, I was very nervous trying to fix everything. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thank you, Ismail. Thank you very much indeed. Your suggestion is, uh, is a good one. Yeah, solar panels can, can contribute a lot in the fight against uh, climate change. Thank you very much, Ismail. No worries. The technical issues sometimes raised during presentations, and that's, that's fine. You're Thank welcome. you very much. Thank you. So let me go back because I think we have concluded. I hope I haven't left out any presenter and that all of you have presented. No? Yeah, right? Yes. Okay. So one moment. So we have some time uh, for questions planned normally. Uh, but uh, I think we are running a bit late and I wouldn't like to to take more of your valuable uh, time. Please don't move the slides. I don't know who's moving the slides. Um, so uh, you can post your questions in the Padlet, and the speakers will make sure to address them uh, at the end uh, of this uh, uh, Teach Me. So before we leave um, and say goodbye, I would like to update you on the timeline for our course. We are in the last mile, as you know, we are in the last module of the course, and we are in the period of peer assessment. If you want to complete this course successfully, and if you have not done it already, you have to develop and submit, and submit your project plan. Once you do that, you will be uh, automatically assigned to provide feedback to the project plans of three other peers, and you will receive three reviews for your own work. The deadline for that is 3rd of June, and after that day, a blackout period will follow, during which the course will not be accessible, and it will allow us to check the reports that have been made during this activity. The certificates are going to be awarded on the 11th of June. Finally, I would like to personally thank all the speakers that joined uh, the event today and made it happen. Uh, I would like to thank all of you, one, uh, more than 150 people, uh, that joined and decided to spend their afternoon with us for, for, and also for participating actively in the course 
And I warmly also invite you to meet again in September when we are launching the next Teacher Academy MOOC on project-based learning to enhance key competencies. Until then, enjoy the very well-deserved summer break that is coming soon. Each one of you have done an excellent job trying to reach and teach your students during the COVID-19 crisis. Keep developing yourselves and stay curious for learning. Have a nice evening and thank you all.